This is the 2014 AP Environmental Science free response question number two. I'm going to go over how to solve the math portion of this FRQ. So go ahead and take a minute to read the prompt. And when you're done, so that's the prompt and the givens. And when you're done, let's go on to B. So B. Calculate the volume of water in meters cubed that runs off the shops at Fremont parking lot after a five centimeter rainfall event. Assume that all the water falls in the parking lot that it run, and it runs off. So um, the little key right here, the clue is meters cubed. So you know you need to multiply together three um, items that are in meters to get meters cubed. So in our box, it says the parking lot. So we're just working at the shops of Fremont parking lot. So right here, shopping center's parking lot. So we have 200 meters times 100 meters. Okay, so that's two of the three that we need. And the other one is down here, five centimeters. So that's in centimeters and we need to get that into meters. So five centimeters is equal to, and you need to do a conversion and you need to know your metric conversions. So if you do not know your metric conversions, you need to review the metric conversion review paper and get a handle on it. So in order to convert to meters, we need to move the decimal over twice and it's 0.05 meters. So now down here, it's going to be 0.05 meters. That is a big, big uh, mistake that my students often make on this question is they leave it at five centimeters and they just put down here five centimeters instead of 0.05 meters and that is wrong. So when I multiply that out, we have two times one, and then is two, and one, two, three, four zeros, one, two, three, four. And then we can multiply that times point, point oh five. And we're going to get two, three, four, and then two times five is ten. Our decimal is one, two, so we're going to do one, two. So our answer here is 1,000. So here's our new decimal. So it's 1,000, and now we have meters times meters times meters, and we get meters cubed. This is not a hard problem if you remember to change the 5 centimeters to 0 0.05 meters. That's the tricky part of, of B. All right, going on to C. Calculate the volume of storm water runoff in meters cubed again, generated in all of Fremont by the five centimeter rainfall event. S assume that only the impervious surfaces generate runoff. So the rest, I guess, soaks into the ground. So we have here, um, we have storm water. We want meters cubed again, and it's a five centimeter event. And it tells us here that we want all of Fremont. So Fremont is 10 kilometers squared. And we want to now get that in meters cubed. So we somehow need to multiply 10 kilometers squared times 5 centimeters. So you can't just multiply these together. You gotta break it down. So let's forget about the five centimeters for now, and let's break down 10 kilometers squared. One big mistake is students think that you can just go, oh, well there's a thousand meters in a kilometer, and so therefore this must equal 10,000 meters squared. And that is not correct you have to first take it out of meters squared and then transfer it to meters. Or first take it out of kilometers squared and then transfer it to meters. So in order to do that, I'm going to do one kilometer times 10 kilometers. So 
So 10 kilometer squares breaks down into 1 kilometer times 10 kilometers. Now I'm going to change it to meters. So 1 kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So now this is going to turn into 1,000 meters. And this one is going to turn into 10,000 meters. And so now we've got meters here, we've got meters here, that's great, but don't forget that. Now we already transferred it into meters in the problem above. So this is how we turn this problem into this problem. So make sure you know how to do all of these metric conversions, especially metric with area. And again, if this is confusing, you need to go back and look at the metric conversion paper and video to help you remember how to do all of this. So now I can multiply all these together and I can get one times 10 so, well, it's just going to be 1 times 1 with 7 zeros. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here and here. And then I need to multiply that by the 0.05. 0.05. And I'm going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7, 5, and then my decimal is 1, 2, 1, 2. So here's my new decimal right here. But there's another part of this question. It says that impervious surfaces cover 20% of Fremont's area. So this is the amount of meters squared. Um, now we're at meters cubed now. Meters cubed that fell on Fremont, but only 20% um, of that amount is impervious. Now, the word impervious means you can't soak in. So the water can't soak in. So this is going to be concrete and asphalt. And so we need to multiply this by 0.2. All right, so my problem looks a little confusing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is times 0.2 for the 20% that's concrete and asphalt and it runs off. So 2 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. 2 times 5 is 10. And I move my decimal over once because it was here once. And my answer now is 100,000 meters cubed. This was meters cubed up here. Don't forget meters cubed. Always put your units in your work and in your answer. It's very important. So the hardest part of C was just making sure that you kept track of all those zeros and that you didn't forget the, the 20%. So that's a lot to keep track of. But the good news is D is easier. So here's the lesson. If you can't figure out C and you just don't know what to do, that's okay. Go on to D, go on to the next one in your math, because a lot of times they get easier. D, assume that all the runoff you calculated in part C is captured by the storm sewers in one day. Calculate the volume of untreated water in meters cubed that bypasses the plant as a result of the storm. Note that the plant still receives 5,000 meters squared of domestic, meters cubed of domestic sewage per day. So what we need is we need the answer from the last question. This is our runoff. Now, what if you got this wrong? Maybe you got some number like 25,000, and it's totally wrong. If you put down that 25,000 here and you use it correctly, then you would get D right. So no points for C, but you would get D right. So if you use the wrong given in the right way for D, you could get it right. So we call that no double jeopardy on an AP test, and it's like that with um, a lot of the others as well, other AP science tests, that is. 
So our last question told us there was 100,000 meters squared that's going to go down into the storm sewers. And then Fremont City already produces their own sewage from toilets and showers and sinks. And it can only treat, though, 10,000. So what's the rest? So it got this much from the storm, this much from sinks and drains, and it can only treat 10,000 meters cubed per day. So what's the amount of untreated just going off into the creek? Um, the answer here is 95. So you add these three numbers together and you're going to get this number. And that's it. So this was just a an addition and subtraction problem. So D ended up being a lot easier. And again, so here's another click, trick for you. Let's say you can't figure out C at all, but you need C for D. Just make up a number. Just make up, oh, I don't know, 5,000. Just make up any sort of number and then plug it into D. And if you use 5,000 correctly in this, in D, you would get the answer right for D, but not C. I hope that makes sense. So that's a trick that you can do for math on the AP Environmental Science and other AP Science tests as well.